Hey there. In this first video, I'm just going to do some housekeeping stuff on the gun just to make sure we're all on the same page as far as setting things up. Uh, if you are making your own gun, I would recommend that you make sure that any of your movable parts are along one of the axes. For example, this gun barrel, um, we want to be able to move it along the Y axis to animate it. It just makes things easier if your axis lines up with your objects. Another thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your scale and your rotations are applied. You want all your rotations set to zero and your scales set to one because that'll affect your transforms later. So control A um, and then you know, apply rotation and scale. And that'll just make sure that everything's zero under rotation and that everything under scale is set to one. You want to make sure that your origins make sense. So for example, the origin of this base plate we want in the middle of the object. We can do that by going into edit mode. I'm going to turn on my screencast keys here. Turn on the screencast. Better. All right. And, uh, you know, edge select, shift S, cursor to selected, tab out, and then right click and say set origin to 3D cursor. And that'll move the, the origin of the object right to the cursor. We want to do something similar with this turret piece. Right click, set origin to 3D cursor. That way, this turret will rotate directly over this piece. For the, um, the breech block, we want that to rotate along the axis of this uh, axle here. So I'm going to select those two vertices, cursor to select it, put the cursor right there, uh, object mode, set origin, 3D cursor. Oops, wrong one. Origin to 3D cursor. All right, and now if I rotate this on the X axis, it rotates properly. And the axes for these guns are, are just fine. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to do some parenting so that everything's kind of grouped together nicely. We want to parent the turret piece to the bottom. So with the bottom piece active, we're going to sh uh, control P and then parent to object. Now if we move the bottom piece, that all moves. I want to do the similar thing with the breech and the turret piece. So shift select, control P. Now all this stuff is all connected. And then the barrels and the springs can be parented to the breech. And if I rotate that, that works. All right, going to the top view with my cursor still where it was in the middle of the uh, axis here, I'm going to add some empties. So I'm going to add an empty, I'm going to add a plane axis, and I'm going to add a spherical axis. And I'm going to move these along the Y axis. So they're just right out in front of the gun a little bit. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to parent it to the base so that it becomes part of the whole collection here. All that stuff moves together. And I want to name this. So we're going to call this one target empty. And we'll call this gun rest empty. Now we want to add some constraints to the gun so that when we move this target empty, the gun always points towards it. All right, so we're going to select our turret piece first, go down to constraints, and then we're going to add a locked track constraint. And what this is going to do, it's going to allow the target, this, this piece to track against this crosshair, but it's only going to allow it to rotate in one axis, in this case, the Z axis. So I'm going to choose my target, which is this crosshair. And if you look at this, it's saying that track along the Y axis of the object, or turn this back on, you see the y axis of our turret faces this way, right? Positive y. And then we want to rotate along the z axis, which is this blue line here. So now if I move my crosshairs, the gun turret rotates. And later on, we can animate this crosshair, and the gun will then track to that. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to um, add another constraint to the actual gun piece so we can do elevation as well. So another lock locked track. And we're going to choose our constraint. But this time we need to change the angle of rotation, right? Because we don't want it to rotate in the Z. We want to rotate along this X axis here. So the locked axis axis is the X axis. And now if I pick this, the gun follows wherever we go. All right. And then this spherical um, empty here, I use as a way to reset the gun into a rest position. So for example, if I ever, at some point during the project, move the gun over here and I want to put it back into its original rest position, I can select this empty, I can say cursor to selected, and then I can say selection to cursor, and the gun will snap back into its perfect, you know, 
orientation so that's you know perfectly lined up again so that, that's just a convenience for during the project so the times you're going to want to move the gun in different positions uh, but you want to put it back to its original position at some point all right that is it for this particular lesson i know it was quick but i wanted to make sure that we were kind of starting in the same place in the next lesson i'm going to talk about creating cams and bones uh, and the cams are used to control the the recoil motion of the gun barrels and the springs and then that motion is also then translated into a whole bunch of other stuff as far as muzzle flashes and smoke and ejections and stuff like that. So uh, those cams are kind of like the central piece of, of making all this clockwork work. All right. So I hope to see you in the next uh, episode because it's, it's kind of cool. All right. See you there.